So Miss World 2023 or 2024 at this point, I don't even know what to call it, has finally concluded. So the 71st Miss World and people are majorly pissed. Like from all over the world, from the Americas, from Asia, from Africa, everybody's upset except for Europe. Mostly because I don't think most people in Europe really care about pageantry that much but also because a European country ended up winning. So let's get into this. But before we start, I need to rant. Can I be upset for like two seconds, please? Because I live in Namibia and the official streaming partner for Miss World this year was Sony Live in India or Sony Live. I'm not exactly sure how to pronounce it, but it's a streaming service in India. It's a network in India. And you could download the app or watch online, but it was geo-blocked in my country. Another interesting thing about my country is that the owner of the actual Miss Namibia pageant, which sends women to Miss World, is NBC, the Namibian Broadcasting Corporation. They neglected to get the broadcasting rights for Miss World. So Namibians had literally no way to watch Miss World. I ended up asking Miss Namibia, okay, how are we gonna watch Miss World? They had no clue. They said they would get back to me. They ended up saying that there would be a YouTube live stream for the countries that did not have access to Sony Live nor had broadcasting rights. And I was like, amazing. And this was 15 minutes before the actual pageant was due to start. And guess what? There was never any Miss World live stream on their official YouTube channel. And so I was scouring the internet like a headless chicken, trying to find a good enough stream to watch. And I ended up on the site of Hector Cermenos or Kermenos. I'm not exactly sure how to pronounce his name. This man, God bless him, he was doing the Lord's work streaming Miss World. Of course, reaction content is perfectly legal and valid on YouTube. So he did have his little gorgeous face there in the corner. Of course, some comments popping up here and there, but mostly he was silent. He was such a good host to be watching Miss World with. So I just wanted to give a shout out to Hector because chef's kiss, it was wonderful spending those three and a half hours with you. Okay, rant over Miss World should do better and make better choices with who their official streaming partners is because the Miss World stream is always a whole mess and the Miss Namibia organization and their parent organization the Namibian Broadcasting Corporation should also do a better job at actually taking out the broadcasting rights for the pageants that they send women to please okay getting into the introductions for Miss World this year I actually enjoyed it a lot. I must say, despite Sony Live uh, having this geoblock issue, India did an amazing job hosting Miss World this year. The stage was big and spacious and vibrant and beautiful. The camera work was lovely. The production as a whole, amazing. I was very, very pleased with the production of Miss World this year. It was I'm sorry to say much better than when it was hosted by Puerto Rico two years ago. And so I really have no qualms with intros. Um, I must also praise the women. They all looked stunning in their various evening dresses. You know, I enjoyed the shapes, the colors, the silhouettes. It was all very gorgeous. And intros were also done in a very tasteful way, in a very classy way, which I can appreciate. You know, I don't like it when they force the girls to walk up to the mic and scream their country name. We've all seen the memes. We've all seen the reels. We don't want our girls to be dragged for filth on the internet and so I do appreciate a classy intro. So of course next they announced all of the fast track event winners. We dedicated pageant fans of course already knew who these women were of course except for the beauty with a purpose winners who they announced according to region. This year Miss World had this weird sort of idea to do everything by region. So they split all of the countries into four different regions being the Americas and the Caribbean, so North America, South America, and all the little islands in between, Europe, Africa, and Asia and Oceania. So that's 
basically the entirety of Asia, including, you know, India, all the way to Japan, and then all the way down to Australia and everything in between that. So that was quite an interesting choice. They did split all of the women into these segments and you guys will see later on they really really hammered on this point i think miss world wants to bring in diversity and inclusion uh perhaps also as a tactic similarly to miss universe in order to gain more support more viewership but miss world is much more open about their inclusivity tactics that they are using you know they're being straight up like we are splitting the world into four parts and then the best women from those four parts are going to be competing against each other in the end so the winners for the beauty with a purpose challenge was brazil uganda nepal and ukraine and of course the rest of the fast track winners we already know who they were so these Four Beauty With A Purpose winners automatically gained entry into the top 40 to form part of the 13 Fast Track winners. The 13 Fast Track winners also, of course, included Tunisia and Croatia, who were the talent and the sport winners, uh, respectively. But you guys know, I've said this and I'm going to keep saying this, I do not think that the sport winner and the talent winner should gain automatic entry into the top 40 i just do not think that that should happen just because i do not see these segments as part of pageantry they are fun don't get me wrong but i don't think that they should qualify for automatic entry into the top 40 i think they should get other sort of um prizes but not getting entry into the top 40. however looking at all of these women and all of the fast track events at miss world i really couldn't help but feel a sense of you know pride in the fact that miss world really does try to showcase all different types of women with all of their special little traits and i think what miss world really does tend to show is that there is such a diversity of women all around the world it's really beautiful even though miss world's um, competition pool is still pretty shallow because of all of their rules that they still have especially cons compared to miss universe which literally has no more rules for entry you know at miss world you're not allowed to be married you're not allowed to have children you're not allowed to be over a certain age etc etc so i do think that it's still pretty interesting that Miss World's competition pool is still so very, despite all of these other rules that they still have, and it does manage to show itself. The 13 Fast Track winners came out in these gorgeous Indian outfits alongside some cast of some Indian show that I'm not familiar with, but I did love this segment because they looked like absolute royalty. They all had these very regal, graceful facial expressions and movements, and they all looked like absolute queens. And then right after this, we were spoiled by all 112 contestants coming out in Indian-inspired outfits. They all looked absolutely beautiful, filling up the stage. It was so glamorous and so wonderful. Only after this, it was finally time to announce the top 40. Now, I'm not going to go through who all were in the top 40 but i will talk about who i was very surprised about not making it of course starting with the philippines the philippines i think was in my top 12 my predicted top 12 she didn't end up making the top 40 which was very shocking as well as thailand thailand was not as shocking as the philippines for me but i did still want her to play badly because i do like tarina a lot um, a lot of it has to do with the fact that she's also south african you know she's half south african half thai so i did want to Serena to place very very much and then there was also Guyana who didn't place you guys know that I have been absolutely feral about Guyana I love her I do not know why she didn't place like that to me was the most shocking of all because I just adore Guyana for me she she did nothing wrong and then also Mexico, you know, Mexico was a bit surprising as a non-placement because she has won an international pageant before, although a mi uh, very minor one, uh, Miss Globe in 2019, I think. So Mexico not placing was equally surprising for me. But also 
with the spirit of inclusivity, I did some of the number crunching and I noticed that uh, besides all of the fast track girls, which included quite a lot of African contestants, in the actual top 40, like the rest of the 27 women, Africa had the most contestants as well, having eight girls. And then the Americas and Asia and Oceania had six girls and then Europe had seven girls. Um, in this little 27 pool of women that they called after fast track winners were announced. So at the end of the day, Africa had the most contestants in the top 40, uh, adding up to 13, including the fast track girls. So I really thought that Africa was gearing up to take the crown this year, but we all know how it ended. Miss World literally just clicked copy and paste on the previous winner, but anyway... After dropping this very controversial top 40, which also didn't include powerhouses such as Venezuela or Colombia, um, they went straight to introducing these judges by name and surname, just so everybody knows who is responsible for this whole mess. And actually, only 13 out of 27 of my predicted top 40 outside of the fast track winners ended up making the top 40 so that was for me like a huge hit to my ego if i may say so myself especially because the philippines guyana and mexico were all in my top 12. in fact um guyana and mexico were in my top eight and in my top four respectively so i was like oh my goodness what is going on here but i have seen someone say that miss world is a very difficult pageant to predict um, and yes I do conquer it's like I I felt like a novice by the end of Miss World this year now directly after announcing the top 40 they went to an instant top 12 now I don't know how how the top 12 and also the top 8 later were selected because the women competed in no portion of competition in between announcing the top 40, the top 12, and the top 8. So I don't know how that worked. I think perhaps all of the women were pre-selected. It was all pre-ordained. Now in the top 12, it was supposed to be at least two countries from each region. At least two countries. So that would leave breathing room for four girls if there were women from Asia or another region, but it's usually Asia who were better who were who scored higher than some of the other girls so i thought well this is this is a good thing it's still inclusive but you know you have breathing room for four girls but no they ended up not doing what they said they were going to do when they released the format and they just split it all equally and put three girls in each region and i think that this is what led to vietnam france south africa and turkey turkey guys the major fan fave who was literally in my top four she fell out at top 12 which is absolutely insane but i must say i was so happy for australia for making it because if you guys watched some of my earlier miss world 2024 videos then you would know that i was a big fan of australia from the start i do think that she has a lot of miss world girl energy and so i was very glad to see her at least make the top 12 so i was happy for her for that especially because she's in such a competitive region like asia and oceania is no joke when it comes to competition so for australia to have made it she must have wowed those judges big time so when it came to top eight they also did split the girls equally placing two girls from each region in the top eight i at least in the top eight i got four out of the top eight correctly so Four of the top eight were in my predicted top eight, which I was happy about. It gave me some relief in my soul. So they announced the top eight. And by the end, when it came to India and Lebanon being announced as the Asia and Oceania winners, I knew the moment that they called India that it wasn't going to be Australia. Not because I'm some sort of wise future telling sage, but because for all of the other regions, they announced the placements in alphabetical order. And so as soon as they announced India, I knew that, okay, Australia is out and it's Lebanon. So when it came to the top eight Q&A, they put the women from the same region against each other. So um, in Africa, it was Botswana versus Uganda, etc. And basically, it's like I've been saying, 
the whole competition is you against the girls from your region only and only at the end do you have to fight the final boss from all of the other regions. But for the Q&A in top 8, I did definitely think that the second girl who was announced in the top 8 had a definite advantage over the first girl because they didn't put noise cancelling headphones or anything and they asked both the girls the same question. So the second girl to answer would have already heard the question, would have already started formulating an answer in her mind, whilst the first one would be hearing the question for the first time and having to react instantaneously. And so I did definitely think that the first girl having to answer had a disadvantage in the Q&A round over the second girl. But despite this, I do still think that Brazil versus TNT, I think that Brazil answered the question better. And the question was all about the most pressing issues um, affecting women right now. I do still think that Brazil had the best, better answer to that, even though Trinidad and Tobago was actually the one to go into the top four. Like, she was selected after the top eight Q&A, she was selected to represent the Americas in the top four and to become, you know, uh, the Americas queen in the top four. In the top eight Q&A for Botswana versus Uganda, you guys, this was a wild ride. This was wild okay so the question was what green sort of initiative would you inspire people to get into Botswana was the first to answer and she answered agriculture can we just talk about Botswana's voice because it wasn't so bad during the top eight Q&A but later when they had to pick uh, when they had to pitch their purpose to the shark tank India sharks I know if you're not with me we'll get there her voice was like, it, it's like she's trying to sound like Marilyn Monroe. And I know it's not natural. I know it's not natural because I've seen footage of her speaking normally. And it was better at head to head. It was better in the top eight Q&A. But when it came to pitching her purpose, it was insanely distracting. Okay. But nevertheless, Botswana talked about agriculture. I thought she had the better answer compared to Uganda. Uganda completely like went off the rails i don't even know how she formulated this answer because it was just wow okay let me let me explain uganda's answer to you so the question is about green initiatives that you would have people practice uganda started off talking about planting trees and i was like yes planting trees that's so plausible but then she went into we have to plant trees because planting trees prevent droughts okay i'm with you so far planting trees prevents droughts makes sense uh, we have to plant trees because planting trees prevents droughts and droughts prevents poverty. All right. Yeah, it's, it's true. Poverty prevents you from selling your children into child marriage. That's literally her answer. And you know what? That might be true, but it's just like it with these four things, it, it goes so far from the original concept of what green initiative would you have people implement it goes so far off the rails that at the end of the day your final place where you end up has nothing to do with the initial question that was asked and i do sympathize she talked about how she was a victim of uh getting married really young and i'm just like in my head i don't mean to be unsympathetic in my head i'm just like how are you at Miss World? Because Miss Worlds aren't allowed to have been married or have a married marriage annulled or be divorced or... So all of this is going on in my head and I'm just thinking to myself, wow, she went so far off the rails that at this point, even though Botswana's voice was a concern for me, uh, I did think Botswana had the better answer when it came to top 8 Q&A. In conclusion, my continent um managed to entertain and not disappoint when it comes to entertainment when it came to the top eight q a moving on to europe so it was the czech republic against uh england and they had a question about issues regarding women's health care and czech republic talked about menstruation england also talked about menstruation but in my opinion i think england had the better answer here 
England definitely for me had the better answer when it came to the top eight Q and A, but of course the Czech Republic was the one who ended up going through to the top four. With India versus Lebanon in the Asian region, the question was about how women could be empowered through social media. India gave a really, really solid answer talking about how women could, you know, do good deeds and spread positive messages and then it empowers women all around okay so that's empowering for the women doing the spreading of the messages and it's empowering for the women receiving the messages and all of that india gave a solid answer lebanon came and for me just gave a less solid answer i was fully expecting india to go through to the top four but she didn't so at the end of the day the only one who ended up in the top four was uh, Botswana, who I thought gave an objectively better answer than Uganda. But in my opinion, all of the other, you know, top four women were reversed. Uh, they gave the less good answer compared to the women that they were competing with. But nevertheless, I do like the Czech Republic. She, spoiler alert, ended up winning. And so I did like her. I thought that she gave us a good answer, but England's was just a little bit better, I must say. And can I just add, Miss World really tested all of our pensions. Like I said, this was a three and a half hour pageant. Now, not that it wasn't entertaining, because I didn't feel so bored, but mostly also because I was watching with someone. I was watching someone's supposed reaction to Miss World, and he was pretty entertaining, you know. Um, not really cutting in, but during commercial breaks and the boring bits and the long videos, he would cut in and he would talk a bit. So it was actually kind of nice, you know, if I didn't have to screen record every single time I watch a pageant, I might just watch his reaction to the pageant that he's streaming live every single time because it was so good, so fun. And so I really do recommend that if you get bored with these long pageants. But they did test all of our patients because they just kept going and going and there was this part about handing out this humanitarian award or something and uh, they had a video message from Priyanka Chopra who just talked and talked and talked. I like Priyanka so I can just imagine people who don't know and don't care about Priyanka because she did win Miss World like 24 years ago. Okay, no, not everyone is so tuned in with the whole history or the fact that she's married to a Jonas brother or something or an actress or whatever not everyone knows who she is or cares what she has to say about singing the praises of the people involved at this world but eventually that ended and they announced the top four which i already mentioned botswana made it um trinidad and tobago and lebanon and czech republic so I only ended up getting one out of four of the top four correctly. Um, and can I just mention, after getting into the top four, all of the women went around uh, the stage and they were congratulated by all of the other countries. And can I just say one thing that I love about Miss World, which Miss World does really well, besides Beauty with a Purpose, which is one of Miss World's only redeeming qualities in my mind at the moment, is the fact that all of the women competing get their own little box when they're out of the competition. They don't have to go backstage and wait, you know, taking off their heels, sitting crying. You know, they are forced to sit, <laughs> forced. They have to, they sit in these boxes with their country's flag. I just think that's really nice. It's really neat. And more pageants should do this. I think Miss Supernational, like, is the sort of pageant that could implement this type of thing. I don't think Miss Universe will ever do it because they have their own their own little streamlined way of doing things. But I really wouldn't mind if other international pageants, you know, just have all of the contestants on stage the whole time, just in their dedicated boxes. I think it's so cool and so cute. So here comes the bit about Shark Tank. So the network that was the official streaming partner for Miss World this year, Sony Live, they actually are the network that produces Shark Tank India. Now, if you don't know what Shark Tank is, it's basically a show uh, from the US, I think, where there are some investors sitting and listening to business pitches from people who have business ideas and then they can decide if they want to invest or not. So the people from Shark Tank uh, were invited and they sat in front of the judges table and the women were told to pitch their purpose 
to the sharks, right? So all of the women came one by one and they pitched their purpose, which I actually thought was a nice touch, you know? It doesn't have to be so rigid. You know, it's a nice little alternative to a final statement. And obviously the judges were listening the whole time. They weren't really gonna have the sharks from Shark Tank choosing your next Miss World. So Trinidad and Tobago came up. She talked about diversity and inclusion. She was obviously very, very, very nervous. Um, and again, I do think that this is because she was the first to speak. All of the other women listened to what she had to say. And objectively, the last woman would obviously have the greater chance of delivering a solid answer because she would have the most time to think, listening to what the other women say, you know, deciding uh, what was solid in their speeches, looking at how the sharks and the judges react to what this woman is saying. So objectively, I do think that the last woman speaking does have a bit of an advantage over all of the other women just because she gets to stand there and listen and formulate. And um, Trinidad Tobago was the first one up. She had solid points but she was very 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 nervous after this it was Botswana which gets me to the voice guys her voice was very very distracting she has this breathy sort of Marilyn Monroe I was getting out of breath just listening to to her I do like Botswana she has been don't get me wrong she has been on top of it she has been up there with all of the challenges top model head to head doesn't matter what it is but that gets me to her voice because it was different during head to head, it wasn't quite, it didn't quite have that very baby-ish, breathy sort of quality to it. I do think it was a bit overdone during this final statement. However, I do still think she gave a great statement. And at this point, um, she, she objectively was better than Trinidad and Tobago at giving her statement. But it was a bit distracting. I need to be honest about this. Then the Czech Republic came up. And guys, I must say... Listening to her pitch, I understand why she won. Okay, listen up. I understand why she won. She gave an excellent pitch. And I do think that perhaps the Czech Republic is a bit of a fan of Shark Tank or whatever because she knew from the beginning how to grab people's attention. She told them to imagine a scenario in their head which engaged their emotions and caused them to listen to whatever she had to say after this. You can tell in the judges, well not in the judges, but in the sharks' faces that they were really engaged, which leads me to believe that all of the judges were engaged as well. In my opinion, the Czech Republic deserved the win based on this final portion of competition, even though England gave the better answer in the previous portion. So I do think that the Czech Republic gave the absolute best pitch during this final portion of competition. Lastly, Lebanon. Lebanon didn't really pitch anything at all. She sung the praises of Miss World to high heaven, but she didn't really pitch anything. So I don't know how Lebanon ended up getting the first runner-up position because after listening to all of the pitches, in my mind, it said, okay, maybe, maybe Czech Republic deserves to win. Czech Republic or Botswana. So either, are, either or could be first runner-up or the winner. So for me, it was definitely between Botswana and the Czech Republic for the win. But when it came time to announce the first runner-up, they called Lebanon, which was very surprising to me because out of all of them, she objectively gave the worst pitch, in my opinion, even though Trinidad and Tobago was pretty nervous. At least she pitched, you know, inclusivity and diversity Lebanon to me it just it landed it didn't land it didn't land it was still in the air at that point so when Lebanon was called first runner-up I was like what what that's not what I was expecting at all so at this point I was like okay I've lost it I have lost my medulla I have lost my pageant mojo I am just I'm deleting the channel <sighs> because I was so disappointed in the fact that um that Lebanon got first runner-up instead of Botswana. So at the end of the day, Czech Republic was called as Miss World and not Botswana, which I was fine with Czech Republic winning because she did give the best pitch. It was close with Botswana. If Botswana's voice, it, it, the voice was the thing that grinded on me a lot because I know that's not her voice. I've heard her speak in a more natural, normal pitch. 
Whew. Okay, so Botswana didn't end up winning, but I thought that Botswana at the end of the day at least deserved the first runner-up position, but the Czech Republic was the one who ended up winning. But let's not end the video there because I do want to talk about Karolina, you know, our current Miss World's twin. And uh, she came out in her final walk in this gorgeous green dress. And I just want to say, I do, I'm joking now about the fact that Miss World basically just hit copy and paste. I do like both of these women. I'm just being a bit dramatic, a bit sarcastic. So please don't think I'm some sort of mm, scarred hater. I'm not. I, I know I have a channel dedicated to pageantry, but at the end of the day, it's not that deep. I don't take pageantry seriously. And But I must say, Carolina came out in this green dress, and I love that she came out, you know, in a green, like, sort of sagey dress. Instead of trying to match it too much with the crown or whatever, she looked absolutely gorgeous. The dress was flowing. It was beautiful. I must say, at Miss World this year, I was pleasantly surprised by all of the gowns. So there you have it. We have a new Miss World. What did you guys think of the show and everything? I would love to know. I still don't know whether or not this is Miss World 2023 or Miss World 2024 because there is a Miss World competition coming apparently in December, which is supposed to be Miss World 2024. And um, so that means that our girl from the Czech Republic, Christina, she's not going to have a very long reign, I don't think. But we, you never know with Miss World. The next pageant might only be in 2026. Ooh, which brings me to some interesting news that I found out. Apparently, Miss Botswana or Botswana has put in a bid to host Miss World 2026. Guys, if this happens, if this happens, I'm definitely going to Miss World because it's like a... It's like a one hour flight away from me. So I would absolutely love it if Botswana would be able to host Miss World. That would be absolutely lovely. Let me know what you guys think about all of this that you watch Miss World. I would love to know. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you haven't already, please subscribe and I will see you in the next one. Bye!